Did you know that invasive monkeys cause up to nearly $2 million in crop damage annually in places like Puerto Rico and different parts of the globe, such as Thailand and South Africa? These monkeys pose a serious threat to farmers and their livelihoods. But in an attempt to curb these animals, how effective are traps in hunting? And what surprising tactics are farmers using to protect their crops and communities? Before we go on, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so for more wholesome farming documentaries. Invasive monkeys are causing destruction on farms, causing massive losses through crop damage and land use changes. Take Puerto Rico, for instance. Between 2002 and 2006, commercial farmers were hit with annual losses estimated between $1.2 million and $1.5 million, all because of these mischievous monkeys. Over in South Africa, baboons have become an unavoidable part of the agricultural landscape, with about 350,000 of them roaming around, according to the latest stats. But it doesn't stop at the farms. These troublemakers are causing chaos even in urban areas. Recently, a Thai city found itself under siege by an army of about 3,500 monkeys. This invasion has driven tourists away and forced businesses to shut down. Imagine a bustling city center turning into a ghost town because macaques are harassing customers and destroying shops. Several companies have packed up and left, leaving empty streets and shuttered stores behind. But what is causing the increasing number of these invasive monkeys around the globe? Believe it or not, one major factor behind the rising population of invasive monkeys is the behavior of tourists and locals who feed them. Sugary treats like sweets, carbonated drinks, and cereals excite monkeys, leading to rapid reproduction. These high-energy foods boost their numbers and make them more active. In some places, monkeys are fed intentionally to draw tourists. In Thailand, for instance, monkeys are revered as symbols of good fortune. Thai people respect these animals so much that they host an annual festival in their honor. During this celebration, over 600 monkeys enjoy a lavish buffet of more than two tons of food prepared by the locals. This feast includes rice, tropical fruits, salads, grilled sausages, and even ice cream. Moreover, as human development encroaches on natural habitats, many monkey species have adapted to living closer to human settlements. This adaptation has led to increased conflicts with agricultural activities and a rise in urban monkey populations. Monkeys are known for their high reproductive rates, allowing their populations to swell rapidly once they are established. For example, rhesus macaques can breed throughout the year, with females giving birth annually. Now let's talk about adaptability. Baboons in particular are highly adaptable creatures. They are not only intelligent, but also proficient at adjusting to new environments. However, this adaptability can lead to dangerous encounters with humans. Each year, numerous individuals are bitten or scratched by monkeys in areas where humans and monkeys coexist, such as cities and tourist destinations. Monkey bites can result in severe infections, herpes B virus, and even rabies. When feeling threatened, some monkeys, like baboons, can become aggressive and pose a serious risk to humans. This escalating situation underscores the importance of farmers using safe and effective methods to manage monkey populations. When it comes to managing invasive monkeys, traps have proven to be both effective and popular. One of the most commonly used methods is the iron cage trap. Made from durable materials like steel, these traps are designed to safely contain these powerful animals without causing them harm. An iron cage trap typically measures about six feet long, three feet wide, and four feet high. This design ensures that monkeys have limited space to move, reducing the risk of injury. These large iron cage traps can capture between 10 to 15 monkeys at a time and are usually placed in areas where monkeys are frequently spotted, such as near forest edges or water sources. The traps are baited with enticing foods like bananas, apples, and nuts to lure the monkeys in. Once the monkeys enter the trap, the effective mechanism ensures they can't find a way out. By setting these traps, farmers can regain control over their land. It allows them to face the challenges these invasive monkeys face head-on. 
protecting their fields and crops from further damage. Now let's explore what happens after these monkeys are captured. After the monkeys are captured in the cages, sterilization follows. The monkeys are anesthetized and shaved, marked with a razor, and then given a unique reference number tattooed under their arms. They are then laid on their back under a green sheet while veterinarians carry out either a vasectomy or tubal ligation. After the surgery, the monkeys are allowed to rest overnight over the anesthesia, after which they are released back to nature. In Thailand, the government has initiated a program to sterilize 500 monkeys over two months. Officials emphasize that this process is safe and will not harm the monkey population. Instead, it is designed to control and slow their growth in urban areas. Apart from using cages, what other trap methods do farmers use to manage these invasive monkeys? Another clever method farmers are using to capture invasive monkeys is the net trap. This trap consists of wooden stakes and netting, ingeniously designed to catch these troublesome primates. The setup features an upward-facing door and a downward-slanting bridge, creating the perfect conditions for monkeys to climb down and get to the food. Because monkeys are omnivores, you'll want to bait the trap with something they can't resist, like bananas. Once you've set up the trap and baited it, all that's left to do is wait for the monkeys to make their move. Regularly checking the traps is crucial to ensure they are functioning correctly. Here's how it works. The incline bridge acts as the entry point. When four to five monkeys step onto the bridge, it automatically collapses, trapping them inside the net. This helps farmers tackle the problem of invasive monkeys by using net traps with an innovative and humane approach. But farmers don't stop at that when it comes to trapping. Farmers also employ manual traps to capture invasive monkeys. These traps are made from simple materials like wood, rope, and other natural resources, allowing for flexibility and easy environmental adaptation. However, there's a downside. These traps can be damaged by bad weather or by animals larger than monkeys. Despite this, many people support the use of trapping as a humane way to control the monkey population. Unlike hunting, which can cause pain and fear when monkeys are stunned, traps allow for safe collection and relocation to new environments. Just like the net trap, this method is seen as an effective way to manage the population while minimizing animal harm. But why use traps instead of hunting? Several compelling reasons exist for using traps instead of hunting to manage invasive monkeys. First, trapping helps maintain the natural balance and protect other species within the ecosystem. By targeting only the invasive monkeys, traps prevent unintended harm to other wildlife. Second, monkey traps are safer for humans, especially in urban areas. Unlike hunting, which can pose risk to people, traps can be strategically placed to capture monkeys without causing danger to residents. And third, the effectiveness of traps in reducing monkey populations is well documented. In urban settings, traps have proven to be a highly efficient method cutting the number of monkeys by 20% to 30% each year. According to annual reports, this approach curtails monkey populations and aids in emergency management and species conservation efforts. While trapping seems like a better tactic, let's understand what hunting involves. When it comes to managing invasive monkeys, using guns is often considered an optimal solution to avoid causing prolonged stress and injury. This method enables hunters to quickly and humanely take down their targets, minimizing the animal's suffering. High-powered air guns are particularly favored for this task. Known for their precision and smooth operation, these guns are ideal for controlling monkey populations effectively. One of the key benefits of using firearms is the ability to keep a safe distance from potentially dangerous animals like baboons. This is a crucial precaution, especially since monkeys can become aggressive and pose significant risks when threatened or provoked. However, it's important to highlight that using guns for wildlife management must be done with utmost care and accuracy. Poorly aimed shots can result in merely wounding the animal instead of delivering a quick, humane kill, leading to extended suffering. It's essential to ensure that hunting practices are carried out responsibly to avoid such outcomes. Additionally, particularly in residential areas or near urban areas, 
the use of guns to control wildlife can cause major difficulties in public relations. Residents may perceive these measures as extreme or brutal. While hunting can help to control monkey populations, it must be done in a way that does not disrupt the natural balance. Overhunting can lead to unintended consequences, such as declining other species that rely on the same habitat. So what measures ensure that hunting practices remain safe and humane? Hunters must participate in training courses to ensure the hunting process is safe. It is important for each hunter to possess a state-issued hunting license and tag before beginning his or her hunting trip. These licenses help regulate hunting activities and ensure that only qualified individuals participate. Community involvement is also crucial. Engaging local communities in the hunting process can help to build support for population control measures and ensure that the methods used are culturally acceptable. In some regions, traditional hunting practices are combined with modern techniques to create a more effective and culturally sensitive approach. However, with the monkey populations continually adapting and growing, the question remains, are these measures enough to keep the problem under control in the long run?